CNN's Nick Valencia is in Atlanta. Nick, you're seeing some new signs Fulton County is preparing for an indictment against Mr. Trump. What are you seeing? That's right. Security preparations have really ramped up here, Dana, in the course of the last several weeks. They've been putting up metal barricades here. We understand some of these plastic barricades that they put up, they filled with water to make them harder to move. And of course, part of these ramped up security preparations have to do with the countless threats that the Fulton County DA has received since leading this investigation. The indictment due to be dropped by the Fulton County District Attorney, it won't be like the other three indictments against Donald Trump. There's a legal twist looming here, and you're going to want to hear about it. Welcome to TYT Overruled. I am your host, Adrian Lawrence. After two and a half years of investigating Trump and co, District Attorney Fonnie Willis will reportedly present her case to a Georgia grand jury next week and also seek more than a dozen indictments. And unlike the three other indictments against Trump, however, well, this one will reportedly hinge on racketeering charges. Now that's where things get interesting. Many of you may have heard of RICO in light of the federal racketeer-influenced and corrupt Organizations Act of 1970, which was created to, what, take down the mafia by connecting mob bosses? Well, Georgia also happens to have its own RICO Act, which is also modeled after the federal act. But it also happens to give prosecutors far more leverage. This from the Wall Street Journal. Under both the federal and Georgia's RICO law, if prosecutors show that there is an organization of people who commit crimes together on a reoccurring basis, then members can be prosecuted for crimes the group committed. Willis has successfully used RICO in complicated scandal cases, including the ongoing case against Grammy-winning rapper Young Thug. And RICO happens to be a good fit here in the Trump case, given the range of antics that his allies engaged in, also the sweeping nature of the crimes alleged, and the cross-jurisdictional issues here, such as accessing sensitive voter equipment in Coffee County, which is a rural area about 200 miles outside of Atlanta. Now, Trump and co. should be scared because Georgia's RICO law is broader than the federal statute. For example, the federal RICO law enumerates a list of 35 crimes or predicate offenses that can be used to show a pattern of racketeering activity. Georgia's RICO statute adds more than 30 additional crimes that qualify. Georgia's RICO law also includes making false statements as a potential crime. And we know that Trump and some of his friends, like maybe Mark Meadows, may struggle with the truth. And these broad features are in part why D.A. Willis likes Georgia's RICO Act. And Trump is trying to shut her down, but he failed. A judge recently dismissed Trump's attempt to disqualify D.A. Willis to prevent her from using evidence from the special purpose grand jury and to block the expected indictments. The former president and his people are clearly scared. She has been waiting for years for an opportunity to have her moment, as I would call it. And I think we see that a lot with corrupt DAs and AGs. It's no longer about the law. It's no longer about punishing criminals that are actually doing crimes. It's about people getting a headline. And there's no better way to get a headline than to go after Donald Trump. Trump and his cronies should be very concerned. Georgia's RICO Act carries a sentence of 5 to 20 years in prison. And while I don't know if Trump is actually going to serve any prison time, well, I think that we're not going to get a conviction anytime soon. Because RICO cases take forever to prosecute, given how complex they are. And the prosecution kind of likes this because they like to wear down the defendants with a long and costly trial, which can lead to some plea deals along the way. Now, I do not think Trump will take a plea deal, but his co-conspirators just may take one in exchange for their testimony. So who do you think would be the first to sing to save their skin at trial? You let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Hit those like and follow buttons. And thanks for watching.